And it's crazy because I was like, no, I'm gonna go away. It's like the flu, it's COVID. Yes, it takes people's lives, but I am 35, 34. I am strong. I work with children. I'm around every immune compromised person. It's not a big deal. Like I am around people who cough on you, babies who spit up on you. I got this. It took me down so quick. Just a couple of days before New Year's, Joanna Vest started feeling symptoms of COVID-19 with fever, chills, a headache. Within just two days, she was coughing up blood and gasping for air. On New Year's Eve on the 31st, I got so sick. About five o'clock, I, I wasn't breathing very well. You could hear me downstairs and it was like um, like a scary movie where you hear the scary person making the, the loud noise and the girls could hear me downstairs and the coughing blood, you know, on the pillow, on blankets, just coughing and I didn't know what it was. I couldn't drink. I was drinking a lot of honey and tea and my husband was like, baby, you need to get up. You just need to move. You just need to move. And I was like, I don't want to get up. He pulled the blankets off my legs and my legs were blue. He's scared. He's whispering to me like, mommy, just come downstairs. Something's gonna happen. And he, I could see the terror in his eyes because he looked like he wanted to cry. And I was crying hysterically. And I told him, I was like, I don't wanna go. People die at the hospital. Joanna had lost two family members to the virus towards the end of 2020. She was scared that she was going to meet the same fate. They had got hit with COVID and they, were gone in two days. When they brought me in, my oxygen was at 72%. Doctors said if he wanted to brought me in, I wouldn't have made it on New Year's. Upon arriving at the hospital, she was put on oxygen and they performed scans on her chest to find her lymph nodes had swollen up to three inches and she had several masses. They kept an eye on it throughout her time there and she was released a week later. Everybody was getting sick. My husband, um, was already feeling symptoms in my middle and my oldest was um she's 17 so they were getting the covid symptoms already after her and her whole family teetering back and forth between recovery and relapse they were finally released from quarantine on the 1st of february and allowed to go back to work but joanna was still struggling i was struggling with oxygen i'd have my pulse ox in my pocket my inhaler and medications in my pocket to kind of help me get through work days. And it started getting harder and harder almost every day. I'd start crying sometimes because I'd feel this overwhelming, like I can't breathe. My boss would come in and I told her, I'm so sorry. I don't know what's happening. I'm sorry to be crying in front of the babies. I'm sorry that I'm causing like ruckus at work. That's what it felt like. I felt like I was causing a ruckus, but being at home was just making it worse. Joanna went back to the doctors on February 25th, her birthday, to check the status of the masses. She figured out that one of the masses near her heart and lungs had grown from the size of a pencil tip to the size of a walnut, and they thought it to be cancer. I knocked on my neighbor's door because I was kind of hysterical. I had the doctor re-say everything, so I had an adult there because I'm getting some in, but then I'm just freaking out. Girls are in the house looking for me. It's my birthday and I just leave. I'm crying. I walk like three blocks. I can't breathe. I'm crying. I have a panic attack. A few days later, one of the tests came back positive for myasthenia gravis, otherwise known as MG, a rare condition that involuntary weakens various parts of the nervous system. It just shuts down my body. It shuts down my diaphragm. It shuts down my main bowels. It shuts down like my esophagus, my swallowing, my tongue. Joanna finally got the mass removed, confirmed to be stage one cancer, but went into an MG crisis after surgery, where she was almost completely paralyzed. I could feel something happening, and I told Michael, I think I'm going through MG crisis. And um, they hurried up and grabbed my husband, and they put me up in ICU, and then they asked if I wanted to be on a ventilator, if I would accept being on a ventilator because since I was still awake. And I said, yes, but knowing that I couldn't be sedated. I had to be awake through the whole time because my, my blood pressure kept on dropping. And so I had to take the risk because if I didn't, then I could actually 
Stop breathing. A month after getting out of the hospital and now being cancer-free, Joanna says that this situation has educated her and saved her future. I'm grateful because if it wasn't for COVID, I tell my friends all the time, I wouldn't be here. I think it's opened my eyes to just trying to make sure I take care of myself, but also making sure that my family's thinking about themselves. It almost took my life. It also gave me my life. With Clarksville Now, I'm Angela Peterson.